Alright, welcome. In this video, I'm going to be uh, moving to the outside um, with Tiny. I'm going to be uh, entering into a more distracting area. Um, Tiny's issues have been, especially with squirrels, so uh, around my house there's like a whole army of squirrels that are constantly going. Um, so I'm going to move to the outside. Again, the focus initially um, in terms of a process is on a less distracting area to really create a foundation in terms of uh, of the method in terms of fading in. But once again that happens, again, uh, we're moving along quite nicely, uh, then the goal is to start to um, continue to expand the relationship in terms of the method. And so here, you're gonna see me transition to the outside, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna walk up the street a little ways. And the focus here is that walking is gonna be on, again, um, intercepting her state of mind. And already knowing that she's over investing in certain things, going to be nudging her out of that, okay? So but when I talk about nudging, because again, understanding the context of influence, okay? How it works to fade in the individual, is understanding about being proactive. It's no different than how you already know you have a relationship problem with a child, so you have to be proactive in terms of how you're interacting. It's no different in terms of advocating properly, because the issue is, once you know that a dog has a level of control, and therefore they're over-investing, they're anticipating gaining control through certain things, Waiting too long is problematic, okay? Once their state of mind starts hitting a tipping point, and you try to um, intercept that state of mind by way of what's called a correction, it can cause a lot of conflict, okay? So here, the goal is um, to stay ahead of the curve of her mind. So just as she begins to invest, I'm going to be nudging. And so therefore, she's gonna be, uh, dogs are more agreeable, okay, to, um, to intercepting the state of mind that way. So it's all about, be proactive. So here the focus is going to be kind of on a couple things is keeping her uh, next to me within great, so this lines up probably within what I call the staging area, okay, to um, in terms of relationship change, in terms of changing her perception. I don't want her advancing ahead. And at the same time, I'm going to be nudging as well in terms of her investment level. So a couple of little kind of multitasking, um, how the method is going to kind of do a couple things at the same time as we're moving forward. Now I'm gonna have the camera around my neck, the GoPro, so I, I need to use both hands here. So hopefully you'll have um, somewhat of a view of what's happening. I'll do my best to kind of angle down the camera at times. So, but again, I'm not gonna be walking far. This is the first time with the method um, online that I'm gonna be moving out into a distracting area. So the goal is, again, just to walk up a little bit and then turn around, because the focus isn't on distance that way, okay? It's on how the state of mind of the dog, how that's traveling, okay? It's on fading in. So it's really important to have good integrity of the method, to take your time, to just uh, not move fast, too fast, because going too fast can be problematic, okay? Based on, again, how a dog's mind is jumping. So here it's like having hard stops, okay, in terms of making sure the dog owner is fading in at the right level. So again, just explain a little bit before I get into it so that you have a rough idea as to what my focus is on. And again, this is for service dog training, so it's really important that, um, you know, Tiny is staying focused on her owner no matter what happens. If a squirrel comes out, if another dog comes out, if people are present, um, if there's a very distracting, a lot of distractions going on, okay, she needs to stay focused on her helper role, okay? And so the issue here, or the focus here, is on building that relationship that way, okay? So again, I'm gonna take the camera and put it on my neck, and we're going to move to the outside, so we'll see the method here. She's checking things out here as we're doing this. So I'm going to have a little bit of a different view going on here, but again, this is going to allow me to, again, we're going outside. Any noises even right here, like the door opening up, things like that, you want to make sure you're um, interrupting those states okay so anytime you're dealing with any dog that and this is this is the issue loud noises will trigger or cause um, a response okay reaction okay what you need to focus on is again is asserting influence at that time to um, intercept that reaction okay so basically um, providing comfort to the dog in terms of, of context and the interesting thing is I'm looking out here right now and you probably see there's a squirrel right there um, on the other side of that tree, okay? Just like the timing couldn't be any better. So there's a squirrel right there. So I'm gonna actually 
we're going to walk right on, on the other side of that vehicle and I'm going to work her. And just like I said, there's like an army of squirrels around my, um, around my uh, house here. So, yeah, I'm going to move here because this tree right here, this big oak tree has a squirrel population, I swear, probably, I don't know how many, but they're constantly, you see, you see the squirrel, there's a squirrel right there, which is great because, again, um, she's going to start air scenting here in a second, probably pick up the fact there's a squirrel there. But I'm going to slowly maneuver her towards the squirrel because this is an exercise in itself because this is a, a tremendous problem for um, Tiny's owner in terms of how she reacts to squirrels. She really wants to go after squirrels bad. So we're, we got to get this resolved. This squirrel just took a big jump. There, there's the squirrel. Let's go and rip the tree. So I'm ready. I'm going to hover here. I'm going to hover here near Squirrel Town. So we're going to, all we have to do is hang out here for just a minute. And so the goal here, again, if you have issues with dogs with, there's Tiny. Until she's, I'm just tapping her a little bit, nudging her. We're hanging out here for a moment. And so the issue here is just taking, creating its own little exercise, kind of hanging out here near where the squirrels are. And now I'm going to move on the other side of the tree. And I'm going to come over to the sidewalk area here too. So move. Again, you want to keep the dog's nose off the, off the uh, ground. So when you do this type of exercise, you don't want the dog even investing in, um, through using their nose on the ground. You want to keep their, keep them focused on you, okay? It's really important as you do this type of thing. I know the camera's going to be spinning here a little bit. I apologize for the camera work, but at this moment here, I'm, I'm, I have to two hand this, so there we go. Putting her back in. So we're just kind of hanging here because, again, we're going to focus on these squirrels for like a minute. As we do with, with the tree here. her so we're just hanging here just gonna nudge her just a little bit like I said when you look when you do this type of thing for reaction my wife is home here too so this is so good in terms of even people being around Move her forward I'm just gonna take a little step I'm not going fast She's looking over there a little bit at the vehicle, and I'll just tap again. Same thing, nudge her out, just to, so she's not over fi overly fixated on any one thing. Mm -hmm. See, starting to bark a little bit here. I'm tapping her out of that. So here, what I'm using too is a kinetic technique a little bit too. As I do this, put pressure through the to the choke chain. Again, the choke chain is meant to give me leverage how you use it, use it properly. So here, you're spinning their head there pretty quick, wanting to invest in something. I didn't even catch what that was. And that's the thing, when you when you have a situation when a dog is really um, trying to turn around on you and really trying to, to lash out, it's really important don't fo overly focus on whatever, whatever that is. Because by doing that, okay, you're creating wor a worse problem. What you need to do is focus on what you're doing in the moment to interrupt that state, okay? This is about control. So really important if you want to overcome issues like this is um, stay in the moment and focus on what you need to do, okay, to create change, not on what the dog's doing, okay? This is all about being proactive at a really high level. Same thing, see, she's wanting to turn. There's something over there I haven't even really looked over. There's something over there. I don't even know what it is. Could be a cat, could be another squirrel. It doesn't matter. What I'm communicating to her is whatever it is, I own it. Because you can think of a service dog, right? You have to really make sure you, and this is what this is, whole process is about, is getting these issues fixed. Okay, in terms of how she's thinking. Totally fixable. This is just about the method. Move forward here again. So the first here, first thing we're doing here, so here, because again, we're getting focuses on these squirrels especially, we're not going to move too far up the street here. 
just gonna take your time. We're going up the street here a little bit. It happens. You're still trying to spin your head a little bit. We're back into the sit. Even here, I'm just gonna move forward. Now here's here's a helpful tip too. When you're doing this, you have a dog that's really investing a lot, um, trying to invest a lot. Is just shuffle forward. Don't um, don't think about going too far here. Just keep it keep it focused on really good integrity of method. Because you go too fast, and you're you're missing opportunities um, to affect the dog's state of mind. So really keep it keep it short. I focus. You know, I'm going to turn and go the other way. I'm one-handing this right now. You see me with just one-handing it here. I'm tapping though at the same time. When I'm moving, I'm nudging that leash a little bit, so it's active. So I'm communicating with her. There we go. Slowing down. See, I'm doing a little, my little vibration technique that I showed earlier in the video. I see her just scanning a little bit here, but again. Okay, this is about how she's focusing and investing. So what I'm looking for here is if she's really trying to target in on something, then I'm going to be more active on whatever that thing is. That's the thing. As I move forward, so you see her eyes are just kind of moving. Or just, and so if I think that she is, then I'll turn a little bit. Okay, so whenever you want to expose a potential problem, you want to create an offset angle. Move your dog a little bit to... And then that forces them to have to turn. And then you'll have a better idea because then they have to turn towards it and then you'll know. So, okay, if she's turning towards something, then it's like you're fading out. So she's blowing you off, so to speak. She's trying to get turned around and she's trying to push beyond um, the method. So here doing really well. So again, just a glimpse into, I'm going to kind of stop it right here. But she's doing really well. Um, you can see here, this is like, um, lots of squirrels around here, which is great. So, lots of opportunity to um, work on that issue. And but again, just understanding about um, staying focused on the method and just continuing to be consistent with how you're working it to fade into the picture. Thanks for watching.